Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to perform a factor analysis. Uh, I've done a previous video series based on principal components analysis, uh, but this time I'm going to perform a factor analysis. And uh, very briefly, the distinction between principal components analysis and factor analysis is that in principal components analysis, you're reducing data uh, in order to explain uh, the total, vari total variance or total variability associated with each variable included in the analysis. Whereas, it, whereas in factor analysis, or what people call sometimes call common factor analysis, uh, the only percentage of variance that's included into the model is that variance that's shared uh, between the variable and the other variables included in the analysis. Uh, so it's a, f it's a fairly fundamental difference between the two approaches. The, the correlation matrix upon which the analysis is performed is different because the, um, the diagonal elements on the correlation matrix are different. You put uh, your estimates of communality, if you will, to start the analysis in common factor analysis, whereas in principal components analysis, it's always 1.0, because you're trying to explain the total variance. Anyway, I'll probably put together a video series uh, describing exactly what the difference is between the two in a more lecture-style format. But for this purpose, uh, I'm going to assume that you know the difference between the two and that you w know you want to perform a factor analysis and not a component analysis. The data I'm going to analyze in this uh, example are real data. They're based on a uh, uh, based on an assessment called the Toronto Alexa Thymia Scale, which is a 20-item inventory. And myself and a couple of colleagues published a paper uh, based on these data, uh, where we performed, in fact, a confirmatory factor analysis rather than a, f a, a factor analysis. Uh, but uh, I thought it would still be quite useful to use these data for the factor analysis. I think in particularly because I plan on doing another video series based on confirmatory factor analysis and you can look at the differences and the subtlety, subtleties and the differences in the results between the two. Uh, again, uh, there's probably a lecture that's required to explain exactly the difference between unrestricted exploratory uh, factor analysis and confirmatory restricted factor analysis but I won't go into that detail right now so here are the variables they're all in a, they're all in the columns so the items are in columns and I've got the subscales here and the total scale so that goes from item 1 to 20 and I've got my uh, cases that are going all the way down in rows uh, and I've got 355 people in the sample so that should be big enough for uh, an analysis based on uh, 20 items. It's not huge, and I would even argue that when you are analyzing at the item level in a factor analysis, it's even more important to have a large sample size. You can't get away with small sample sizes when you're analyzing at the item level, in my opinion, because the correlations tend to be relatively small between the items. Um, so you really want um, some uh, a large sample size to examine those types of correlation matrices. All right, so just as in the principal components analysis approach, in factor analysis, you, in unrestricted exploratory factor analysis, uh, you're stuck with the first step of trying to figure out how many factors to extract in your uh, analysis, your factor analysis. So you have to, in, first, in step one, uh, you can, as I did in the principal components analysis, you can look at the scree plot. But I've also done another video series where I did a parallel analysis. And I encourage you to look at that so that you can figure out how to do a parallel analysis because I suspect, I would argue that it's the most sophisticated approach to determining the number of factors to extract in a factor analysis. And what I used in the other video series on parallel analysis or a Monte Carlo simulation of eigenvalues is a uh, a macro that was uh, developed by uh, Brian O'Connor and uh, I'm not going to tell you where you can find that because in the other video series I've got it but I'm just going to do that now I'm going to do the parallel analysis uh, I'm not I'm going to assume that you know how to do that because you've watched the other video so I'm going to specify my items which is I1 to I20 I've got 20 variables, 20 items in the analysis, and I'm going to change this to 5,000. 
Uh, I want to keep the 95%. I want to keep this a 2, because now I'm doing principal axis common factor analysis rather than component analysis.